What's up, everybody? The doctor is in reporting to you from Atlanta with Final Round 2018, being joined by the myth, Tasty Steve. How's it going, man? Chilling, man. How are you? Oh, wait. I'm going to shake your hand first. There we go. How are you doing? It's been a minute. I think the last time I saw you was at uh, Battlegrounds. Yeah, we were at Battlegrounds, and we actually talked about Marvel a lot. The cinematic universe, actually. The cinematic universe, not the, uh, the, not the dead game. You see that new trailer? God damn it. God damn it. So, just like last time, I actually mentioned I'm dodging trailers. I'm not watching trailers for any MCU stuff because I want to go in fresh mind and just be surprised by everything. That face doesn't say you agree. Bro, I thought the exact same. I swear to God. They were like, yo, new trailer cover tomorrow. I'm like, I can't watch that. I cannot watch that. But I can tell you right now, if there's any more trailers, I won't be watching them. But that last trailer, oh, my God. Duh, dude. I, can't, I don't want to ruin it for you, but you should definitely watch that trailer. That's All right. my favorite line from the trailer? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. It, it's going to be in your voice. All right. Character. Really? Yeah. Maybe I'm really good at imitating the character. That's true. I mean, you can just blow it away. I hope they remember you. Done. That's, that's, uh, what's the, oh, what's the word? That's dramatic. Exactly. That's oh, man. So, MCU, you said it's coming to an end, but there's actually a lot of movies coming out this year. We have Ant, uh, Ant-Man Wasp, we have Aquaman, Infinity War, obviously the biggest one. Uh, Black Panther came out about a month yeah. ago. I actually just recently saw it last weekend, and yeah. Amanda, Amanda disowned me. Damn, she disowned you. <laughs> For what? What happened? I took too long to see the movie, I guess. You know Say Jam still hasn't seen the movie? He's on notice. Say Jam is on. You're on notice. You know the rules. We, we cohabitate each other's culture. You need to go see this goddamn movie. We're going to have an issue ASAP. And I know this is going to get back to you. That's why I'm saying it. And I'm going to say it to your face, too. Anyways, go ahead. So actually, speaking of Sajam and appro not appropriate culture, but uh, conflicting cultures, I don't know if you've heard this rumor going around. There was a plot to get James Chen stuck casting Street Fighter during the Goichi Sonic Fox first to ten. Damn, that sucks. That is that's pretty intense. I don't blame him though, because it was Sonic Fox versus Goichi. I definitely had the dodge commentary just so I could do a commentary for that. Shh. Don't tell anybody that. But, yeah, I had to. I mean, but who didn't want to watch that? Like, what the fuck? I mean, stuff. <laughs> what the tuck? What the tuck? So, were you one of the unfortunate souls that may have put some money on Sonic Fox? Oh, no. But I'm going to say, and I'm going to share this directly with the person. I'm not going to say who it is. But, man, you almost got me. He almost got me something fierce. Oh, damn it. Video games is a fickle thing. I can tell you that. It's a fickle thing. So, it... I believe it can still happen in bracket where we can get a rematch there. Would you still pick Goichi? No. I don't, I don't know because, like, Sonic Fox has had a day. You get, if, if you get time to mull it over, that's one thing. However, there's this tradition that may be starting. We saw this recently in Marvel, so oddly enough. Kane, Blue River, F Champ. They played a first to 15 in Marvel. Champ won the exhibition and... Kane won the tournament. So, or one of those ways. I'm not, I can't remember 100%. But one of those things happened. And I feel like, hey, Sonic Fox won the exhibition. He lost the exhibition. Well, yeah, he lost the exhibition, but he could win the tournament. He could win the war. Yeah. The battle, he could win the war. Yeah. So, speaking of losing battles and winning wars, there's been a lot of big names here at Street Fighter Final Round, and not all of them seem to have made it through pools. Yeah, it's uh, I'm not going to say, the thing is about it, it's not actually a blow-up. Let me be 100% clear. There's actually no blow-ups. The players are all really good and outside of personal pride and, you know, character matchups. I feel like that's the only thing you're looking at. You're looking at a player versus a player um, where I don't really naturally consider it a blow-up. I just consider the better, the better player winning that day. All right. Um, so this is obviously the first big event of the Capcom Pro Tour. Uh, they did a lot of changes to the point system, you know, some redistribution, premieres are worth a lot more, online worth less, and things like that. What are your thoughts on these changes going forward? So I really do like the fact that since we're getting further into the, the eSports aspect of what we do, especially when it comes to fighting games, um, it's actually becoming a lot better. Each year, even if you have a problem with something, something doesn't go your way, point distribution may not be too well, you might not want international, point, uh, international players to be able to come to a foreign territory and win points to go globally. Things like that all get ironed out when you get one, two, three years in. On top of that, you get like the vocal from, say, you know, 
some of the players, some of the community gets involved, and they're like, hey, well, that's actually pretty dumb. You probably <laughs> want to do it. Th-. Like, it's, become, it's, it's taking a more organic feel. Um, I really like the changes that were made overall, not just to that tour, but to many tours that's like, you know, that still exist, that is. Yeah, I think one of the biggest ones I've heard about today was the uh, last chance to qualifier change, where it's no longer first seed versus 32nd seed. Um, some of the players seem to be really for that. So last year at, at Battlegrounds, uh, one of the things that, happens was, that happened was the fact that Cool Kid won the last chance qualifier and Punk had to fight him right out, and he had won the most like events. Like that doesn't make sense. Like they, you're, you just put the dangerous guy, the the guy with the most to win. It's kind of like a Rocky scenario. That's what they should have called it, the Rocky Clause. Damn, I love Rocky. Just by the way, uh, that's what they should have called it. But think about that. You're getting, you're having a, a player that's won the most events have to play the most dangerous player coming from an event that he just won. I feel like that's a bad, you don't want to do that. It just looks bad. So the changes that were made, I feel like are very much appropriate. It definitely kind of flushes out what we're trying to do, especially when we're making it a legitimate eSport out of Street Fighter or just like fighting games in general. Those are things you have to consider. Yeah, and so, you know, like we said, premieres are worth a lot more. So, you know, final round is pretty stacked. Like, we, there's a ton of players here. Do you think that's going to be the trend going forward where we're going to see more players at premiere events and maybe they're going to not discontinue the lower ranking events, but they're just, like, all about these premieres for points? Well, I feel like you you basically hit the nail right on the head. If they have it the way it is now, they will have more of those those top you know international players the top you know even domestic players come out and go to premier events as opposed to some of the smaller events but i feel like that kind of helps the scene out because you get a light more on those smaller scenes one two for those players who might go there and they might have another time for the smaller players to step up and make their way into the limelight by beating a a more well-known player it's kind of like a king of the hill mentality for territories i think it's really cool by the way but yeah i think that's i think that's dope actually yeah, I mean, Cinderella stories are always good to hear about, and people always love to watch them. You know, you spoke about Cool Kid making his way through the bracket. Um, and so, you know, we're seeing more of these premiere events. Uh, you spoke of Red Bull, and that was a couch, caster couch. Uh, so when it comes to couch chair meta, where do you stand? Because we've heard that you're, you're a bit too relaxed on the couch. I mean, look. If you're not comfortable, you ain't casting, I feel like. If you give me a couch to talk on, I, I guarantee you nobody sits on the floor in their house. You don't sit in a single chair in your house. What kind of maniac does that? If you find me a person that goes in their house and sits in a single chair who's not reading a book or rocking a baby or breastfeeding, they're crazy. I'm telling you right now. Those people are crazy. Nobody, you see how comfortable I am? It's more than enough room. I'm a compact guy. I'm fun size. Why do I need, I need to take up as much space as possible. My whole life has been compact. Maybe I want to expand. You ever think about that? You know, I'm, you know, I'm sorry but (laughs) that's the way I think about it you know I mean I think I'm trying to you know give you guys some culture in the couch chair meta that's all I'm saying you got to be up close and personal with the love you're giving out you're spreading words you spread love I spread legs just kidding just kidding don't I was just I was on a tangent I was on a tangent that was a joke because that could be anything So League of Legends has done away with all of that, and their caster, their commentators have to stand. Oh, damn, they got bodied. They don't want anybody to be comfortable. Well, I mean, I feel like StarCraft, you know, well, I said StarCraft. I feel like League is a very much a game where you can't stand up. Like, that's dangerous. I feel like you might lose the blood flow to your head. There's a lot of important things going on. That's a bad idea. Guys, League, you might want to reconsider this. I'm just, just going to put that on the table. My two cents, if it means anything. Who knows? Dollar to a euro. Who knows? So, are you saying that League needs a bit more leg spreading? A lot more leg spreading. I feel like you guys relax a little more. Uh, I feel like leg spreading makes everybody happy. Who doesn't like a good, you like a good leg spread. I like a good leg spread. I'm pretty sure somebody else at home watching, listening to this, likes a good leg spread. Let them dudes relax and talk about video games, man. We're relaxing talking about video games. Look how much fun we're having. (laughs) See, I could go on a tangent like this all day. That's why you don't give me a microphone, okay? I feel like there's a lot of people giving you microphones these days, though. Yeah, I mean, that's the part of video game culture, man. I like video games, and I feel like it's a good, it's a good thing to be a part of. Uh, I'm, I'm extremely blessed. I feel extremely honored that people look to me and listen to me enough to where I can have these chairs and have these mics and these crates to stand, talk, and sit on with the couches, more leg spreading. In general, I've, I'm, I'm truly honored, and I really do like being able to talk about our community in such a light for other people to understand how cool it is. All right, man. Well, thanks for the time. Uh, enjoy the rest of the weekend. I believe you're still casting Tekken? Probably about to run.
flying over there and do it right now. <laughs> All right, well, good luck with that, and we look forward to seeing you again.